Hey what's going on guys, this is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. Solo Tank Rom and Solo Healer Focusing Lens Ying both have one thing in common. They're both bad. Neither of these champions are bad in their own right, but playing them in this way will set your team up for failure. But why is that? Well, this is because of the distinction between subclasses and paladins that the game doesn't outright tell you about. There are two subclasses in the frontline and support classes, those being main and off tanks, and main and off supports. These aren't properly defined classes in the game itself, but instead are broadly agreed upon subclasses that have very real consequences for a team's draft. In this video, I'll be explaining exactly what each of these subclasses mean, and why it's so important to know which characters and playstyles fall into which category, so that you can be better prepared when making your next team comp. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. Let's start off with the frontline class first. It's very common to hear people refer to each tank as a point or an off tank, but what does this mean? Well, you can think of point and off tanks like this. A point tank is a more defensive class of tank that is great at securing the objective and defending areas of the map, while an off tank is great at pushing into the enemy team, scoring kills, and making space for their team. The best example of a point tank is Barrick. His entire kit is designed around defending and fortifying an area, with his big shield and stationary turrets that shoot at anything that comes close. On the flip side, a great example of an off tank is Ash. She has a smaller shield that creeps forward, allowing her to push into the enemy team. She also has a great movement ability for forcing her way through enemy defenses, and tons of crowd control to disrupt an enemy team. A lot of tanks in the game have ways to serve as both a point or an off tank, depending on what the team needs. Makoa, for example, has a point tank playstyle with his half shell talent that allows him to provide excellent cover on the objective or any other zone that needs defending, but he can also be a menace to the enemy team with pluck by playing aggressively and scoring kills with his powerful damage. It should also be noted that just because a tank is classified as a point tank, it doesn't mean that they should just go to the objective and sit. While point tanks are great at doing that, they should prioritize playing with their team and helping protect them to win the team fight, and then control the objective when the battle is already turned in their favor. If there are no enemies contesting the point, then it can still be wise for the point tank to push up in order to fortify a more forward position. And off tanks shouldn't outright avoid the objective either. Sometimes their assistance on the point can be vital to winning a game. Generally, both types of tanks should coordinate with their team and focus on doing what they can to win each team fight. The distinction between subclasses determines whether that tank should primarily be focused on being aggressive and pushing with their team, or defending their team and the point. With that being said, which tanks are point tanks and which are off tanks? Well, let me show you. On the far left, we have tanks that excel at point tanking. On the far right, we have tanks that are the best at off tanking. In the middle, we have tanks that have ways to do both, usually in the form of a talent. All of these are better at off tanking than point tanking, but they're at least competent enough at point tanking to get the job done if none of the true point tanks are available or you just don't enjoy them. So when should you pick a point or an off tank? Well, in most cases, if your team doesn't have a tank at all, you should pick a point tank. When an off tank is forced to tank alone, it's often much harder to capture an objective than if a point tank were in the same role. This is because many off tanks simply don't have the defensive skills needed to hold an objective effectively. If you've ever tried to solo tank with Rom, you probably understand this feeling very well. Almost always, you should pick an off tank when you already have a point tank on your team, or at the very least you should be picking two off tanks together rather than just having a single off tank on your team. Having a point and off tank on the same team is one of the most reliable strategies in Paladins, and you see it everywhere in Ranked. This is because you can have one tank focused on holding the objective and protecting their less aggressive teammates, while the off tank and the flank or damage champions work together to beat back the enemy team. A few good examples of tank duos would be Inara and Ash or Khan, Fernando and Azan, Barak and Atlas, or Azan and Yagaroth. Each of these tanks are strong in the right hands, and work together to make whoever they're fighting very frustrated. One thing to keep in mind is not to let the enemy team get too much value out of Wrecker or Bulldozer, because these two items can counter a lot of the tanks in the game. For example, a team with both Fernando and Barrack on it would encourage the enemy team to buy a lot of Wrecker, and once that's achieved, neither of those champions will be able to shield effectively. In each of these examples, only one of the tanks would give the enemy value out of either Wrecker or Bulldozer. With Anara and Ash, Ash would be the only one countered by Wrecker, while Anara would be the only one countered by Bulldozer. With Fernando and Azan, it's the same thing. Another thing to consider is how much value the enemies would get from buying resilience to counter your team. A lot of tanks have very powerful crowd control, but if two tanks with powerful crowd control are stacked on the same team, the enemy team will usually rush resilience to make those abilities useless. So, Ash and Atlas paired together would result in both getting demolished by Resilience 3 fairly quickly, while Atlas and Barrack paired together would mean the enemy team has less of a reason to buy resilience, and if they did, Atlas would be the only one countered by it. 
Next, let's move on to the support category. Support subclasses fall more along the lines of playstyles for each support, rather than purely having supports that are only off or main supports. So, what are main and off supports? Main supports are supports which are responsible for the bulk of a team's healing and are primarily focused on keeping everyone alive. Basically, they follow the traditional role of a healer. Off supports, or damage supports, are supports which don't necessarily bring huge healing output to the table, but rather play a more active role by helping their team get kills and doing a lot of damage themselves. So, which healers are main supports and off supports? Well, all of them are. Like I said a moment ago, the distinction between support subclasses lies in the talents of each support, rather than merely a character by character basis. Let's use Grok as an example. Grok's three talents serve as a pretty good example of what each of these subclasses entails. Spirit's Domain is his main support talent. This is the best talent that Grok can pick to heal his team, since it allows him to provide consistent, reliable healing to anyone in his range. He doesn't do a lot of damage by picking this talent because he's busy shooting his teammates to heal them, but the healing it provides makes him a solid choice for a main support if you can aim well and manage your totems. Maelstrom is Grok's off-support talent. This talent greatly increases Grok's ability to do damage by allowing him to spam out more shock pulses, and is one of the best damage talents in the support class. He's great at softening up any grouped up enemies, allowing his teammates to go and finish the kills, or simply finishing them himself. However, this is not an effective healing talent because it doesn't amplify his healing output in any way, and Grok's base kit is one of the worst at healing without picking a healing talent. Totemic Ward is Grok's hybrid talent. This talent strikes a balance between healing and damaging, and allows him to be a useful asset to his team, but isn't necessarily the best at solo healing a team without a specific team comp. It increases his ability to heal an area effectively and is very helpful for tanks, but it doesn't sacrifice his ability to deal damage. However, his damage with his talent won't be as impactful as if he went Maelstrom, since his shock pulse won't be as strong. You can basically think of this talent as a second off-support talent in most cases, but one that is more focused on healing. Just about every support has a dynamic like this, where they have talents for being a main and off support. Not all have a hybrid talent, but that's not a big deal. So, when would you want to pick a main support versus an off support? Well, if you're the only support on your team, then you should always pick a main support. That includes you, Ying players. Pick the healing talent and keep your team alive. Main supports are the backbone of any good team, and without them, the team will be flimsy and fall apart very quickly. Trying to pick an off-support playstyle as the only healer on your team will almost always end in failure, because your team will be significantly lacking on heals. However, that doesn't mean that off-supports are bad, oh no. Off-supports can be a fantastic addition to the team if the team already has someone to cover being the main support. Maelstrom Grok alongside Lifelink Io, for example, is a very powerful combo. Focus Ray with Exterminate Furia is another absolutely fantastic combo. But if you're going to pick two supports on your team, don't have both of them be main healers. While your team will have extraordinary healing in the early game, your team comp will fall off hard in late game because of cauterized scaling. The later a match goes on, the less effective healing will be on anyone who is taking damage. Picking two main supports will lead to a situation where you have two teammates trying to heal but not being able to, and also not contributing to the team's damage. You want to have adequate healing on your team, but you don't want to go so overboard with healing that you forget about damage. Two off-supports can also work, but only if the off-supports can still provide adequate amounts of healing in their base kit. A good example of this would be having a Ferocity Grover and a Binary Star Genos on the same team. Genos doesn't exactly do phenomenal amounts of healing, but he can still supplement Grover's healing while focusing on damage. Grover, meanwhile, is a great hybrid support who can deal lots of damage while also healing his team effectively. Together, they can keep a team alive decently well. Focusing Lens Ying with Maelstrom Grok, however, will struggle to keep a team alive. Even though there's two healers on the team, both of their damage builds are so bad at healing that it will be hard to keep everyone topped off. So, picking two off supports is really situational, but with the right champions, it can work. But with that all being said, that's going to be the end of this video. If you have any questions or want to give any tips that I might have missed out on, be sure to leave them in the comments. Also, make sure to check out my Twitch channel where I stream Paladins regularly, and join the Discord server to find people to party up. Also, if you want to support my channel, then please visit my Nexus at nexus.gg slash andrewchicken. There, you can buy crystals, the season pass, and more, and a portion of all the proceeds go to supporting this channel. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching, I will see you all next time, peace out.